Okay, we've now officially got a release of Retrobat version 6, and in this setup guide, I'm going to show you everything you need to know, so check this one out. <laughs> Okay then, we now have Retrobat version 6 stable, it's literally just been released as I'm recording this video and of course I've covered Retrobat for a very long time now, I've got a whole playlist on Retrobat so I'm going to do a full setup guide for the latest version of Retrobat version 6. Before I start this setup guide, make sure to hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. It really helps my channel out a great deal, plus it gets you up to date retro emulation as I release it. So we're going to head over to the Retrobat website and everything's all snazzy and new right now. We've got purple going on. Now if we just go to download Retrobat, as we can see here, latest release is version 6.0. We're going to download this from itch.io and we're going to download just here and if you feel like donating to the developers behind retro you can donate five dollars minimum is what they suggest if you can't afford it then you can just go to no thanks just take me to the downloads and we're going to download stable windows 64 setup.exe now if you're already running version 6 beta 3 beta 2 or the first beta of version 6 or even if you're still running version 5 i'm going to show you in a minute how to update it so you don't need to go for this full installation process so this one's going to take a little bit of time maybe a couple of minutes downloads there's a lot in this package as we can see this one's weighing it in just over a gigabyte okay once you've downloaded this you're going to end up with an xc if you just double left click And Windows protected your PC, so if you're using Windows 11 from time to time, you will get these pop up. Just go to more info and run this anyway. And the first part of this installation is choosing your language. Now, obviously, I'm going to choose English, but you've got a variety just here of different languages to select. Uh, English for me and press OK. And here we go. Welcome to Retrobat Setup Wizard, Retrobat version 6. I'm going to go to next. And we got a license agreement just here, so if you feel like reading this for an hour or whatever, then feel free. I'm going to accept the agreement and go to next. And again, I'm going to press next. Now, the next option we got here is where you want Retrobat to install to. Now, by default, this is going to go into my C drive and it's going to create a new folder in there called Retrobat. But I'm going to show you around this in a minute once we've got this set up. I'm then going to go to next. And we also want to create a desktop shortcut, so we don't have to go with C drive every time to open this up. So create a shortcut and next and finally install. Now this next part is absolutely crucial, Microsoft Direct X. Some of you might see, do you want this app to make changes to your device? Now remember Retrobat requires Direct X as well as Visual C++, which I'm going to go through in a minute. We press yes on this. Okay, so we're just going to let this install and just be mindful if you're running a lower end potato type computer, this can take a substantial amount of time. Just bear in mind that this is now installing and it's strapped in RetroArch itself because Retrobat runs mainly from RetroArch in the background. RetroArch is essentially the skeleton behind it. If you're new to Retrobat, then you also can download emulators through Retrobat itself. And in some cases, with particular systems, we do need to go external outside of Retrobat to download emulators. But like I say, I've covered most of this at this point in my video. A Nintendo Switch Yuzu emulator, for example. So we're just going to let this extract and do what it's doing.
Okay, and we are now completely set up. Now, before I go into Retrobat and show you anything else, I'm going to just press finish. Next thing you need to be aware of is that if you don't have Visual C++ installed, Retrobat isn't going to work correctly. So I'm going to take you to a website now, and I'll leave the link in my description for this. So right here, we have Visual C++, Redisputable Runtimes All-in-One, and this is what you need to download. Now, I've already got this installed, but I'm going to go through the process with you. So if we just download using this little tab just here, and I'm going to use a server, which is going to be Tech Power. So that's now downloaded. And once you've downloaded uh, Visual C++, the best thing to do with this is create a new folder on your desktop, new folder, and we're just going to leave this as new folder. You don't have to name this because we're going to be deleting it soon. Now, those files, these X's, and we've also got a dot .bat in that Visual C++, we're going to just drag those into that new folder I've just created. And what we're going to do next is go into that folder. And the one you need to double left click on is the top one. It says install underscore all dot bat. Just double left click. Windows protected your PC. More info, run anyway. Uh, every now and again during this, you're going to find little pop-ups potentially come up on your computer screen. So, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Yes. Okay, so after a couple of minutes of continuously pressing yes on those pop-ups, Visual C++ is now installed on the computer. So we can now delete that new folder. We no longer need any of those .exes or that .bat, just delete them. And we also want to delete the setup.exe. We no longer need that because Retrobat is now installed onto our system. Now, what I normally do with my setup guides for Retrobat is just give you a little tour around the structure of it. So. Like we know, it installed to C drive and it created a new folder in C drive, Retrobat. So the easiest way to get to this is by right clicking on your shortcut, open file location, and this is going to take you straight into Retrobat where everything's installed. So first thing I'm going to show you is batgui.exe. If we double left click on this one, Okay, so on opening back GUI, it's now called the new back GUI, and things are looking very different from here. So literally, this is the first time I've opened this up. So we've got different manufacturers down on the side. So this is going to be referencing all the systems that Retrobat covers. Now, if we go on a couple of these tabs, such as it seems obviously this is an update in process eventually. We also got BIOS Checker. To my knowledge, this is a new feature for back GUI coming soon but that could be very interesting it's likely that's going to scan for our bios files or the missing bios files that we need to power particular systems such as uh, sega cd configuration okay so configuration is just going to tell us where the retro path is we also got change log so under change log, we got some new changes just here to appear in batch UI. Okay, so right now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to leave batch UI and I'm going to cover that once new updates have been applied to that. So let's take a look at different folders. So we got BIOS folder just here. Now, predominantly your BIOS files for systems such as uh, Sega Saturn, PlayStation 1, and other systems such as PC Engine CD, most of the time your BIOS files goes into this folder loosely. There are exceptions of other systems which has its own dedicated folders, but I'm not gonna get into that now. Now, if we go to the cheats folder, we can actually use RetroArch to download cheats. 
and your cheats will end up in this folder. And again, I've already done a setup guide on how to get cheats using RetroArch through RetroBat. So that's interesting to watch if you're into cheats and games. Now, Emulation Station is quite a good folder to use. And again, I've covered different setup guides to enhance RetroBat and do this and that using this folder. Normally, if you go to the .emulation station folder, things like themes, you can put in Emulation Station themes into this folder. We've also got a music folder, which we can actually put our own tracks in there. So rather than having the standard default background music in the front end to RetroBat itself, you can actually put your own music in here. But like I say, I've covered that. So if you want to check that out, that's in my playlist. And we also got video. So when we boot up RetroBat for the first time, we got four videos here. So each time you boot it up, you'll likely get one of these. However, you can create your own custom videos as a boot sequence. And if we come back out and out again, and most importantly here, we got ROMs folder. Now, each one of these folders represents each system that RetroBat version 6 is going to cover. So it's literally a simple case of going into each folder and dragging and dropping your games. Now, for systems like PS3 or PCS3 emulation, then it's not as simple as just dragging your games in. But I've done various setup guides and something like Techno Parrot, there's a lot more to it than just simply dragging your games into folders. But like I say, check out my RetroBat playlist. And here we go then. So let's just open up RetroBat version 6 for the first time. Okay, so here is RetroBat version 6, and if you're wondering how to disable front end music, you've seen how i just done it. Just go to sound settings in main menu when I'm pressing my start button to do this, and then just simply pressing A, it's going to deselect front end music. So what have we got here then? So if we go inside of ports, we got a few games, which is normally the case with uh, RetroBat releases. We got a port of what looks like to be Bomberman. We've got a Minecraft port of some kind. And we also got a very cool Rick Dangerous port just here. If we go to arcades, we got no entries found. Into favorites. This is obviously where we can add our favorites for our game collection. So that will end up in your favorites folder. Under light gun, there's nothing in there. Now, let me tell you something how the light gun section works. Whatever games you upload or rather put into your main folder or arcade folder within RetroBat, RetroBat cleverly adds them into the light gun folder. So let's take a look at the main menu itself. So normally the process of downloading new themes for RetroBat is by opening up main menu. And from here we can go to updates and downloads and themes. Now you'll get a selection of themes pop up just here. Now there's one particular theme, which is the top one I'm actually on a touch of glass. In the past, this one's actually been a bit of a problem to download using RetroBat. And if you remember just a minute ago, I actually showed you a folder where you can actually put emulation station themes. So if I press on this one's download, we're gonna check out if this one downloads now and install. Okay, so we're going to leave that one going. And obviously, we got plenty more themes to download in here. So, plenty of themes in there to download. Now, if we go to Content Downloader, and again, I'm pressing A on my controller to enter these. Under Content Downloader, we got many retro homebrew games, and we've even got, randomly, a Sonic Lost World 3DS demo. So there's plenty here to get you started with, including a free port or shareware version of Doom. Uh, we also got Volga the Viking, which is a Dreamcast homebrew game, which is always released on these uh, RetroBat releases. So by the looks of it, there's lots of new content to download within the content downloader and if i just press right on my d-pad we'll go go over to intro videos now 
when you boot up Retrobat, you'll get a video pop up. Like I was saying just now in the videos folder, uh, we can actually download additional videos nowadays with Retrobat, which is pretty cool. So lots there. And what we're going to do is actually just download one of these. So say Tetris intro by Scotty Retro. Uh, Scotty Retro, we contributes a hell of a lot to the Retrobat community. And install. Now, something else I'm going to be covering fairly soon is that we've now got 3D Zen Launchers Pack Volume 1. Uh, for those who's unaware, 3D Zen is a Nintendo NES or a Nintendo NES 8-bit emulator which makes games 3D. I've covered this on my channel on separate guides, even done a showcase. So I'm going to be doing a retro back tutorial for this one fairly soon. And if we go to shaders and mega bezels, we can then pimp out our retro games by adding some of these but again i've covered this already on my channel to so do check out those playlists and if we go to the bezel project it appears nothing's actually in bezel project at the moment as you know i've literally started recording this video literally minutes before it uh dropped on me that it just released now what i was saying just a minute ago if you're currently using version 5 or say version 6 beta 2 or beta 3 what you need to do is through updates and downloads just make sure that update type is selected to stable and then you just go to start update now for me this isn't going to update because as we know i've literally just got stable version 6 here other things we can do from the main menu if you're new to retrobat is controller settings if i go in here we've then got the ability to actually map out our controllers so I'm going to enter this by pressing A on my controller. If you're using a keyboard at this point, then Z comes out and X goes in. So I'm going to map my controller. I'm using a Google Stadia controller. And what I'm going to do with the first option here, it says South. So I'm going to press A. And then East is going to be represented on my controller, on my Google Stadia controller with the B button. North is going to be Y. West is going to be X and so on. Now, start and select buttons. Nowadays, with modern day controllers, you no longer really get start and select buttons. So use your imagination and think old school and then you can map those out. Deep pad up. And if you're new to the world of front ends or anything like that, then just remember that hotkey means that it's the buttons on your controller you're going to press to exit a game. Okay, another feature we got here, which I'm going to show you about in a minute when I start adding some games into Retrobat, is Scraper. Now, with Scraper, you're going to need to go into Scraper options. And from here, you can then use image source and box source. Uh, normally, I recommend image source being box 3D, box source being box 2D. And we can also download preview videos for our games. I always say get fan art. If official original art don't download, then fan art is a good backup to use. Now, with this, you're going to need to sign up with Screen Scraper, which is absolutely free. Once you've finished signing up with Screen Scraper, you simply then just put your username and your password in. Okay, and since I've got nothing to scrape right now, I'm just going to go back, but my details are now put in. So once I put some games into the ROM folder, we can then go on to that. And now my new theme is downloaded. I'm going to go to User Interface Settings and it's downloaded and it's installed to the theme set so if we go in here here's the theme which i downloaded just now if i press a on this to select it i'm then going to press b to come out and here we go and if we press select on your controller you're going to get access to what's known as a quick access window this is like a menu so we've got a view user manual option here uh, we got launch screen saver we can restart the system and everything else and we can also use this to quit emulation station which is what i'm going to do now really quick yes okay so to add some games what i'm going to do is just head over to my most favorite website for homebrew games and this is itch.io now if you're new to my channel get used to it i'm a big c64 fan so i'm going to add a commodore 64 game to this and I'm randomly going to select Super Carlin the Spider. 
downloads now. I mean, again, just like Retrobat, if you feel like donating to the developer behind Super Carlin Spider, donate minimum of $2.99. Or, no thanks, just take me to the downloads. We're going to download this. Here's my game, Super Carlin the Spider. And within this download, I've now got a folder inside. I'm going to just take this out, drag it onto my desktop. If I go inside of here, I've then got the disk file, which I need, or even a tape file. I'm going to use the disk file for this. Super Carlin the Spider D64. Now, be mindful that when you're downloading games and you're adding games to Retrobat, in terms of come in to scrape your game's artwork, possibly and potentially if you've got files like this with numbers everywhere, there's a good chance that your scraper software won't pick this up. So sometimes it's worth your while of just editing how these games are titled. So I'm going to take away all of these spaces here and here we go. So I'm going to add this into my Retrobat ROMs folder by right clicking on my Retrobat shortcut, open file location, and we're going to put this in the ROMs folder. If I just search for C64, here it is. And I'm going to just pop that inside a C64 ROMs folder. Now, if we open up Retrobat again, And as you remember just a minute ago, I also downloaded a new video for when Retrobat boots up, and that's it. That's Tetris. I quite like that. That's pretty cool. So now we put a game into our ROMs folder, we can see C64. If we go in here, first of all, I'm going to scrape some artwork. I'm going to press main menu, go down to scraper, and because I put my credentials in, I'm going to go to scrape now. And when you're scraping, you will notice in the top right hand side, it's telling you what is scraping. This is normally what happens. Scrape and finish, update game list to apply changes. Go to game settings, update game lists, and really update game lists, yes. Now you're also going to find with particular themes that your artwork might not necessarily display. So for that reason, I'm going to change this back to the default theme, which is theme carbon master and remember to come out of here press b on your controller okay so we simply got no artwork for this so what i'm going to do is actually add another game to this in a minute so hopefully the next game we got will work so in order to run your games through retrobat normally what happens is by pressing select button you're going to view options and from here we can go to advanced system options and under emulator, you're likely going to find Libretro. Now, Libretro literally means RetroArch. Like I say at the start of this video, Retrobat predominantly runs with RetroArch in the background. Now, different cores, what are known as cores here, have different abilities. And my personal favorite for C64 emulation is actually the Vice Time 64 SC core. If I select this by pressing A, and let's boot up the game first. So I'm going to press A to open it. And as you can see, Retrobats boots straight into my Retrowatch selected core and we want my Commodore 64 game running. If you're interested in microcomputers, then normally through this system, if you press select or your equivalent of select on your controller, you'll get a virtual keyboard come up. And for many C64 games, ZX Spectrum games, uh, even Amstrad CPC and some Amiga games, you'll obviously need a keyboard a virtual keyboard at some point. This is a good example. Super Card and a Spider loads game. So I need to bring up my virtual keyboard and I'm going to go up to the digit one and press A. And in a lot of cases, if you want to speed up the process of loading, just press space bar.
Okay, so we can also access the RetroWatch quick menu whilst we're in gameplay. Obviously, this is for RetroWatch systems only. I'm pressing down on my left analog stick and pressing down on my right bumper at the same time. Uh, from here, we can do a lot of things. We can uh, go to controls. Uh, from port 1 controls, we can change device types, so if your controller isn't working under device types, we can select one which will work. Uh, we also got other options within quick menus, such as this control, so say you're playing a Commodore Amiga game, or you're using a Commodore 64 game, and it asks for disc 2 or disc 3 or so on to be inserted, under disc control, you can go down to load new disc and you'll likely see the second, third or fourth whatever disc listed here. In that case, just select the second disc and then just insert disc and that will then load your second disc for your game. If I press B to come out of here and B again, I'm actually going to download cheats which I mentioned earlier on. I'm not going to go into too much detail with it, but to do this, uh, we're going to go down to online updater and from here we're going to go down to update cheats let this download and it's strapped and if you want to find out more about using cheats in retro battle like i say i have done a guide on that but this is how you do it very briefly uh, from this menu just here we can also go to back to quick menu and if we go down to core options we can then play around with video settings for say c64 such as pixel aspect ratio and let me just say that most retro watch systems which you emulate through retro Bat, generally have the same type of layout as this although something like commodore 64 does have more options because c64 emulation just like most microcomputer emulation has more things to offer if you're going to go down the console route such as super nintendo mega drive or pc engine then it'll be a little bit more simplified rather than having uh things that we can see here such as vic 2 filters which is a commodore 64 video chip that type of thing <laughs> So what we're going to do is actually quit and go back to RetroBat, which you can do through this RetroArch menu. Just go to quit RetroArch and press A. And here we go. So since I couldn't demonstrate downloading artwork, what I'm going to do is just quit out of RetroBat now and actually add another game into RetroBat, a game which requires BIOS files. So I'm going to go to quit. Now, I've got a 3DO game just here, and 3DO requires BIOS files. So I'm going to briefly show you how to do this. So, first of all, RetroBat, we're going to go to Open File Location, and we're going to go back down to the ROMs folder again. And 3DO is right at the top just here. Uh, my 3DO game is in here, and this is in CHD file extension. If I just drag that into the 3DO folder within ROMs, also going to need some BIOS files. Now, since RetroBat doesn't have the ability right now to tell us which files we're missing for uh, games that requires BIOS files, easiest way around this is actually to use Google or your favorite search engine, because remember, these are going to be powered using RetroArch. So let's just boot up RetroBat for now and see if this game is recognized. Okay, so we can now see 3DO. If we just go inside of here, uh, first of all, it's useful to know what's going to be powering this. If we go to Advanced System Options Emulator, as we can see just here, uh, the Retro Retro Watch Core Opera is going to make this game work, or we can download Phoenix. And like I was saying earlier on in this video, uh, we can also download emulators through RetroBat. What I'm going to do is just select this one to open up with the Opera. And now we know what we're going to be powering, we can now find out which BIOS files we need very simply. Just quit out of RetroBat. The best way to do this is just to search using your favorite search engine, say RetroWatch 3DO. And this is what I've done. So we've got Opera just here, and this is obviously RetroWatch Core. And just here, it's going to list what BIOS files we need. So I'm going to take a look at these BIOS files. And once you've found which BIOS files that particular system needs, we're simply going to go back to RetroBat shortcut, right click, open file location, and in the BIOS folder, like I mentioned before at the start of this video, we're going to loosely place those required BIOS files inside of this folder. That's simple. So if we open up RetroBat,
Okay, so if we go back in the 3D, we just make sure that that Libretro Retro Watch core selected, which it is, we can now boot up the game. If you don't have the BIOS files, it's going to just come back on itself. And in some cases, it will say it's missing BIOS files because RetroBat is looking for BIOS files to cover other systems. And as you can see, we're now booted into the 3DO. And like I said before, once we're finished with a game, you can either press your hotkeys, which will take you back into Retrobat, or by pressing two button combination, you can go to quick menu. And for example, from here, if we go to core options, your options will then vary from the options, which I showed you just a minute ago for C64. And remember, you can also quit out of Retrowatch and head back to Retrobat from Retrowatch by going to quit Retrowatch here. So let's just actually scrape some artwork. So again, to scrape, scraper, and scrape now. And game settings, update game list, yes. And here we go, see, I did tell you that it does work. I just got very unlucky with the first time around the scraper. <laughs> So now that I've got that artwork, user interface settings, and I'm gonna go back to theme set and apply a touch of glass. <coughs> which is looking pretty snazzy in a theme, which looks a little bit better rather than the default theme that comes with Retrobat. Okay, very briefly, I'll cover this in most of my setup guides, but through Retrobat, we can actually change how games look. So you can do this by pressing select on your controller or the equivalent of select, advanced system options. Under shaders, we can actually add scan lines and we can apply curvature, shaders, that type of thing. Uh, we've also got decorations. Now you'll notice that when I was playing these games, the C64 game and this 3DO game, we got panels on the side. So you can leave that to default or you can go to none and that will remove those decorations. Now, normally, if you want a full screen, one of your games, by doing this, you will need to select none. If you leave a decoration in place and select aspect ratio to full, which I'm going to show you in a minute, then your game is going to be cropped off by those decorations. So I'm going to select none on this. Game aspect ratio. So with Retrobat, by selecting auto, it's going to select for you the next option which is four by three aspect ratio now because i removed the decorations i'm going to put this to full integer scaling just make sure this is on or like i say just leave it to auto and that's gonna take away some pixelation vertical sync is always useful to have on this yes especially if you're playing 3d games vertical sync is going to take away any screen tear and we've also got visual rendering and let me just make you aware that most systems in retrobat are going to have these very similar options like this one for 3do just here visual rendering video filters we can apply more options such as scan lines to our games to make games look more retro uh smooth games by linear filtering by auto this one's going to be off let's put this one on and like it said it actually smooths out games eliminating any pixelation 
and we normally got drivers too now if you're finding a game which should boot doesn't boot normally if you go to drivers in a video change over your back end's driver by default this is going to be OpenGL. some games on other systems will require your back end's video driver to be selected as Vulkan. for me this works okay as OpenGL, especially for 3do and c64 if we go down to emulation, most of your retro watch cores or rather retro bat has this option for emulation, which will vary system to system. If we go back into this game. You'll now see that the sides are now different and we're now going to be in full screen mode with some pixelation disappeared because we've used different shaders. And that's it for my Retrobat version 6 setup guide today. Uh, like I said at the start of the video, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. And let me just make you aware, I've got a massive playlist for Retrobat, but I'm not a Retrobat channel, I'm a general retro emulation channel. I think some people forget about that. But do check out Retrobat playlist and take a look through my other content that I've uploaded in the past. Also join me on social media, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And from time to time, I do ask people watching my videos to donate just a little bit. My PayPal is in my description. Any little helps, literally anything helps my channel progress onto something bigger in the future. So anyways, until next time, stay retro.